Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 with another exciting episode of Teardown Tube. And as you can see, I have our next victim here. I found at uh, my local thrift store for 8 bucks. And um, I just wanted to show you, I've already modded this, or repaired it rather. It's a Creative uh, Zen Micro. And let me just show you it in operation. I only loaded a few amount of songs. I'm planning on selling this little guy. Uh, because I do not need another MP3 player. I have about a million of them. But anywho, you can see it takes a while to turn on sometimes. <laughs> and there we go, the Zen Micro. And volume works. Everything functions. So, let's get on with the teardown. This will be a double teardown, because originally... It came with this 6 gig drive inside this uh, Compact Flash Type 2 micro drive. And it had the click of death, which basically meant that whenever it was trying to access the drive, uh, it was a mechanical failure, and so you'd hear the armature clicking, but it would never be able to load all, you know, it was mechanically dead. So luckily, I took a, I, I have many dead scrapped iPod minis, and I had a 4 gig drive. A different uh, manufacturer, I believe it was a, an Hitachi, but I had one of those kicking around that I knew worked. I did a disc scan on it, and so I just replaced it, and now it's fully functional. So first off, slide off the back cover, remove the battery. The battery is a 3.7 volt, 680 milliamp hour battery, and Creative nicely decided to go with a user replaceable battery. So I approve you can see the three pins for um, positive, negative, and temperature sense. Now, to get this guy open, um, you're going to need some sort of pry tool or pocket knife. And so, you have to remove this top bezel, which is easier said than done. Razor blade would probably work wonders, but uh, I'll use what I got. There. There's some adhesive on it. Ah, oh, damn it. So there. And watch out because the uh, the power switch will come along with it. <laughs> and set that to the side. Now, get your screwdriver. Uh, let me get a finer one. Phillips. And remove the two screws that are along the top here. It doesn't have to be done in this order, but I prefer doing it. You can actually, I believe, uh, start sliding out the back a little bit first, but whatevs. So, after you got uh, those out, uh, one interesting thing to note um, before I go much further, they do include an onboard mini USB uh, slot, which is uh, pretty nice, but you have to install, install drivers onto uh, your computer for it to be recognized. It's not natively recognizable as a mass storage device, I don't believe. You have your slide power switch and your headphone jack. And the design is uh, very interesting. I've already taken this apart, but uh, let's get going with this. Oh yeah, and there's a little lanyard attachment so that when you slide your battery cover on, you can uh, put a lanyard there, which is kind of neat design. Anywho, uh, this is, I believe, from 2004, so put your fingers on the metal shielding, pull down, it'll click down a bit, and it'll start releasing it. Now, there is a warranty sticker, which you'll have to, before sliding that piece down, you'll have to uh, take a knife and just cut it. And, but I don't, I'm pretty sure all the warranties are void by now anyway. And then I start from the bottom of the player and push out just slightly and then you can kind of pivot it out from there and you can see the rear uh, contains uh, Molex connectors to connect to the uh, the main board the headphone jack and you can see some uh, some capacitors, a diode, that's pretty much it not all too interesting but uh, there you go close-up shot, action shot anywho back to autofocus so now we have this this is a piece that slides it's interesting how they designed this um, six clips three on each side just take your pocket knife don't bend them upward too much but just enough to get them out 
of the way. Then you can just lift that part off, and that's that. Now we have the main body. Ooh. Okay, so here, be careful of this area. There's a tape on here, and that is where the uh, main flex cable for the hard drive goes. And so you just want to get a little fingernail underneath that and carefully lift it up, and then you can pull out the uh, ribbon connector there. So anyway, um, sorry. There we go. Uh, you'll notice a Texas Instruments um, TMS320 here, a Philips um, ISP 158380. Was that three? Someone drew with a. Marker on it eh, for uh, that it passed regulation. Um, and let's see what else. I see ST parts, SST. Uh, this appears to be the main processor. Um, you'll notice the uh, tuning clock here. Probably it's it's either the main system clock. Oh no, this guy is the main system clock. This guy is for the real time clock. And the main system clock is operating at 12 megahertz. And Fairchild uh, chip in here. It looks like to be, because it's paired closely to the hard drive, maybe um, a memory controller, like a hard drive controller of some sort. Uh, let's see, this is the main system RAM. Uh, very interestingly enough, this is um, the LT uh, semiconductor. This is the power controller. And you'll notice um, a lot of... Uh, what appears to be a regulator cap and interestingly enough this is a step up uh, DC DC most likely than not a small transformer um, I've been reading a lot about how there are battery problems um, uh, with this guy unfortunately um, they're saying that it doesn't go into standby quick enough and so it just eats up power even when it's supposed to be off and uh, that's due to it running the switch mode unnecessarily, unfortunately, uh, even when it's supposed to be off. Um, but other than that, let's see, there's another clock here, 12 megahertz as well for the uh, uh, chip right in here, which I assume, because of its proximity to where the headphone jack would be, is the, uh, the codec chip and the um, digital to analog converter for the audio. Uh, let's see what else. Another Texas Instruments chip right in here. Uh, you'll notice the microphone. They put a little rubber cap on there. Uh, nice attention to detail. Tiny little electric microphone. And the power switch, which is similar to like every other power switch I, I've ever seen, like the PSPs and the uh, DS. It's just a spring type, no military. Okay, so let's get on with this. So what I like to do is remove the screen there are four tabs here, and you just want to carefully pry them out. Ah, uh, this is going to be annoying, isn't it? It's not going to come without a fight, right? Okay, you know what? Why do you hate me? Okay, there are two metal tabs at the bottom as well. Might as well start loosening it first. Then you can get these guys. And there is a socket underneath, so you want to be careful. And it always sticks for some reason for me. So, you want to get in here and pry. There is a little connector right in there you can see. And you should be able to lift this to the side, not all the way out. Because the uh, touch, front touch sensor, sorry about the focus, come on, attaboy. So because the front flex uh, cable for the touch sensors is there, which you can remove, it has its own Molex. I'm surprised by the sheer number of connectors on this. <laughs> and from here you'll notice, um, mine is corroded, it looks like. 
but um, the small battery for um, keeping uh, the real time clock alive, I guess, if the battery dies or whatnot. But mine's all corroded, so yeah, looks like it started leaking out. Ugh. And you'll notice a Samsung flash chip. This most likely than not contains the firmware um, that you flash um, the player with uh, that contains the operating system essentially for the device. And you'll notice some, uh, I believe those are tantalum caps. Uh, very orange. Anywho, not much here, but it definitely, it passed the test. There we go. That's a good sign. And a serial number on the bottom there, but uh, if you look at the density of uh, all the traces, it's pretty packed in there. And the uh, circuitry is uh, very dense. Here's a close-up shot. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, now we can remove the screen. It's just a monochrome screen as a back, uh, blue backlight. And uh, the display area, you can kind of see the outline of it there. It's not the full screen per se. You'll notice the, uh, the chip on glass, which is uh, right at the bottom here, uh, covered in silicone. And finally, the ribbon cable wraps around. It's it's uh, heat, heat bar soldered most likely, than not. and you'll notice the, uh, the decoupling caps for, or the bootstrap caps for the uh, internal supply that it needs to generate for the high voltage segments. The Molex connector and some power supply circuitry, as well as a coil craft inductor in there for the uh, for the uh, the step up. As well as, in there you see a K and you see an A, that's the anode and cathode for the blue backlight. So this is a pretty nifty module. I wonder if um, it must use, well it could use parallel, I assume it would use uh, parallel data addressing, but if you actually reverse engineered the protocol by uh, hooking into this with the uh, logic analyzer while it's on, you could probably uh, drive this LCD yourself. So anyway, that's that. Set that aside, and now the micro drive. So this slides out actually. I like this design. It took me a while to uh, figure out how the heck this was put together. Ugh. And the original had foam around it, but uh, I couldn't quite peel that off without destroying it. As I said, I put in a 4 gig Hitachi micro drive um, from an iPod mini. And you'll notice the multitudinous uh, pins for the ID connection in there and looks like uh, this was made by a company called Career, the uh, flex cable assembly and do not seal this hole upon death anyway and so that's that yeah looks like yeah anyway Well, that's not a good sign. It looks like uh, there's a small rip in this uh, flex cable. Ugh. I might have to go over that with a soldering iron. But uh, oddly enough, it still works perfectly. So, <laughs> Anywho, from there, I will not be tearing this down anymore because that would require me to remove the front bezel from the metal mid-frame assembly. But uh, here's a ribbon connector for the uh, main touch control which is powered by, uh, no surprise, a Synaptics chip right in there. And you'll notice some uh, power supply goodness in there, uh, probably for regulating like the LEDs that are embedded in here. It glows blue when it's on. I, you saw it. And so, let's slide this bad boy back in. Get this back together and make sure it still works. I always put the screen in upside down. Always. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Good boy. So, pretty much of it just to put it back together. And it's easier to put before. Um, actually putting the, the board in, it's easier to uh, get the connector for the hard drive in there. Gotta hit it. Okay, it's in, locking the bar. It's not going anywhere. 
Come on. There. So many clicks. <laughs> Should be in there now. Okay, what did I forget? This guy. This guy. Make sure it's in the down position. Now the exact opposite to put it back together from the top. Push it in and snap it shut. Then slide this up. Oh damn, I forgot to put the tape back on there. Not that it's really necessary, but it's uh, a good idea. Darn it, I always do this. Always. Well, it's not that big of a trouble. I've done far worse, like forget a single screw and uh, in in the very center of a device and then put it back together and realize that I needed that screw. And then I wanted to cry. So, ugh. Of course, now it's pissing me off. There. There, are you happy? You happy now, hard drive? Huh, huh? Let's, before doing anything else, just test to make sure that still powers on. Might need the power switch for that. You can hear the hard drive kick in. Come on, any day now. That's the thing, when it boots up first time after it goes to sleep, which is after, I believe, four hours on the newest firmware. It takes a little longer, but it looks like it is working there. Oh, I know what it is. I didn't connect the ribbon connector successfully. Yeah, it's not responding to touch controls. Ah, dark damn it. Okay, you know what? Uh, this is going to take a long time-ish. So I'll be back. Okay, I lied. It didn't take that long. Um, but yeah, the cable for the touch, sen uh, touch panel on the front came undone. So that's pretty much all that happened. Opened it up, put it back in. Uh, now, let's turn this off, shutting down, come on, there we go, attaboy, helps to talk with your electronics, so anywho, two screws go back on, in, whatever, shut up, Ah, why do you hate me? Interesting that the uh, the iPod Mini, which is the uh, direct competitor for this device, also has two screws on its top, and it also requires you to remove a bezel from its top to uh, access them. And it also has a power switch that kind of fits in the exact same way. The uh, the similarities are uncanny. Okay, and then you just press it in, and you're good to go. And so that's pretty much that. And so once it's already been booted, it doesn't take that long to turn on. See? It's back up. And so there we go. Still works. Yay, I'm getting better at this. Anywho, <laughs> so now I want to make a double teardown. And because this drive is dead anyway... I thought we'd have some fun with it and open it up and show you guys the insides. I've already done this um, with some other broken micro drives, but I never filmed it. So, three screws. They are the tiniest little guys, so sometimes it helps to get a pocket knife. And very carefully, 
I said very carefully. Oh, these aren't going to co cooperate with me at all today, are they? You really need a super ridiculously fine screwdriver for these. Okay, you know what? No more Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, come on. There we go. One down. Sort of. And is it getting hot in here or is it just me? There we go. They're pretty long, actually. Ah, another one. I guess I just didn't twist it enough. And the last little bugger. Come on. Be very careful while opening this so that you don't uh, injure yourself there. There we go. It's starting to come out. Come on, you little bugger. Yeah, you really need like the right size screwdrivers for these, but I don't have them, so I just brute force them. There. Okay. And then I believe... Yeah, sorry about that. Um, my phone ran out of memory because I'm recording in HD and it consumes quite a bit of memory. Anywho, uh, hopefully it didn't cut off too much. But um, while I'm updating the other part, uploading it to YouTube, I'll get on with the rest of this ter teardown. Firmware 3.13, oh my goodness, uh, plus 5 volts. Seagate.com, warranty void if seal is removed. I really don't care since I can get a compact flash card that is much more efficient, smaller, yeah, slightly smaller, and uh, with a lot more memory than this. But anyway, this is the 6 gigabyte Seagate ST1 drive for embedded applications only. So anywho, let's uh, tear the label off this sucker. Who cares about warranties? He says as he has trouble tearing off the label. Hopefully there are no more other dreaded screws. And here it comes. Another label underneath the label. I love it. Ah, uh, lots of sticky goodness. Uh, well, wow, that just sounded wrong. Anyway, so, bezel comes off. Just a thin piece of uh, aluminum there. Aluminium for all my uh, British viewers. <laughs> anyway, and so, this one should also pop off, hopefully. Or not. Maybe there's some screws that I have not seen. So anyway... Uh, another label. Let's get this guy off. Yeah. It's like Christmas morning. Every microdrive I've taken apart is slightly different, so... Oh, wow, this looks cool. So, some more sticky film. And so, it's really cool. You can see all the vent holes and stuff like that. This looks awesome already. And the main circuit board with the uh, connector pin in there. So, let's see what I have to do to take this apart. Ah. Okay. Looks like a uh, tri-wing. Tiny, tiny tri-wing screws in there. That's why I was using a little Phillips. That's why it was... Being annoying, though I'm sure this will still be annoying, just albeit in a different capacity. 
and it is... I hate little screws. I can't even tell if it's working or not. Oh, dear sweet lord. There we go, I think it's spinning. Five hours later, my video ends. Ah, oops, slipped. Oh well, this is broken anyway. No one saw it, no one saw it. Are you happy yet? Stupid screw. Screwing with my head. I can't even tell if it's doing anything. Oh, it's coming off. Albeit very, very slowly. Sorry if uh, this isn't focus or whatnot. Uh, this is just a hell to do. But I love you guys, so I do it willingly. There we go. Damn little screw. Okay, anyway. Please don't tell me there's anything more. So this should just pop out. Yep, and there's a little spacer. And a tiny little Molex in there, which connects to the uh, armature. And these four little press fit contacts, oops, oh well, thank God it's already broken, <laughs> that um, connect. Here, let me get a focus on all this. There we go. Uh, that connect to this little guy here, which these are press fit connectors. And um, interestingly enough, instead of discrete chips, um, they have the epoxy blob -ness in there. And decoupling caps. Uh, this guy is a crystal, I believe. And an Atmel. Uh, this is probably the flash that holds the firmware. And lots of little decoupling and whatnot. And that connector in there. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. And the little scratch that I made. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anywho. And there is a little, uh, you know, codes sticker or whatnot that they can scan at the factory. Uh, pretty cool how small and light. This is very thin, flexible uh, PCB. Not your standard fare. But that's how they make these guys so small. So, anywho, I see many more screws. God damn it. Well... Who knows, maybe they won't be total asses? Yeah, I got it out! Yeah, man. Sorry about the focus. I keep forgetting that I have a camera. Okay. One down. Couple more to go. Yeah, downward pressure uh, on... A uh, regular size tri wing seems to work. And one more, it looks like. Yeah, it's working. Ha ha. I defeat you all. Anyway, so now we should be able to just lift this out. I said we should be able to just lift this out. <laughs> What could it be? What could it be? There has to be something else holding this in now. I see a whole bunch of little stickers. I am confused. Nope, they just cover uh, the other end of the screws. Nothing to see there. Oh, 
This guy. No? Darn it! Red herring. Anywho, I'll figure this out eventually. Oh, duh. Missed one right in the center of the armature. Oh, why? Sorry if this is rambling and taking a long time. These screws are the bane of my existence. Ah, give me a sec. Okay, came up with a new method. Putting pressure on this and just spinning it around until the damn screw gets... I stripped it, yeah. I know, I'm a horrible person. Whatever. So now, it should be able to lift out. I feel it's kind of loose. And so you can see the small neodymium magnet, which is how it propels the, uh, the head there. And it's super shiny. You can see me in there. Hey, it's my eye. Anywho, so very strong magnet. This is the uh, parking assembly that uh, locks the armature in its parking position when it powers the drive down to prevent any scratching. And this is probably uh, some sort of desiccant or something. It goes right over the uh, disc dry there. And so. I'm going to get my fingerprints all over this. You could see, just like any other hard drive, the uh, platter assembly simply rotates. Uh, this guy in here, the... Here, let me get a close-up. There we go. So, this guy in here is to separate the heads before they uh, go onto the disk drive. And the... Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in a video before. They're very finely separated, the heads, from the actual uh, disc itself. It's like a less than a hair's width, which is tiny. What the heck is that? Oh, well. You'll notice a absolutely minuscule little chip there um, for controlling. That's probably for, yeah, it's, cause it leads right up to the, um, the head assembly. So that's for um, packaging the data to send it over uh, here um, to the main controller. You'll notice a little coil in here which um, is the electromagnet which repulses or pulls toward the uh, neodymium magnet in there. And that's how it moves that. And so we should be able to remove more screws Lefty Lucy, ready, tidy. There we go. <laughs> we all need reminding sometimes. And so, the uh, collar comes right off. Uh, and the disc itself. I know I'm getting my grubby fingerprints all over, but I really don't care. But this is a cute little disc. 1.8 inches across. That's why they call it a 1.8 inch hard drive. Uh, the little piece that keeps the... Uh, the read write heads on the armature uh, separated. The tiny little hub motor. Look at this guy. It's so cute. Um, gonna see if I can get this bezel off. And so, might require even more screws, though, unfortunately. But let's see if we can make our way around this. I'm getting the hang of this. These screws are absolutely tiny. Come on. There we go. Sorry if this isn't riveting, but uh, it's difficult to do something so small on camera. So, one more screw, and it is a flathead. So hopefully if I get a uh, smaller flathead bit out, 
Hopefully I can uh, torque that guy off. It's to remove the armature. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I removed every screw, so this should also lift off. Come on! Oh, uh, just. Yeah, gasket sealing it in. And so. That's that. The little tiny chip. The uh, little ribbon connector. Uh, I can't even count the number of uh, conductors in there, and my camera will not focus in. But there are quite a few. Every, one for every pin, I'd assume. Or, well, not quite, but anyway. Uh, you'll notice the read right head. Head's in there. If I can focus. Ah, come on. Okay, let's get in there, and you can see the little read right head in there, which is essentially a little electromagnet that can either read the magnetic domains on the disc or write to them. And I've already bent the heads out of alignment. Anyway, this is never going to work again. It wasn't working to begin with, hey. <laughs> so let's uh, remove the rest of these little stickers just for completeness because I want to see the um, the coils on the other side of the hub motor for the main uh, spindle it removed everything they might have embedded this into the actual frame might not be quite removable unfortunately Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if I, I don't think I can actually get this out. Oh well, that wasn't useful. It's not a tear down until I break something or cut myself. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't think this is uh gonna cooperate unfortunately. It's um actually melted into the composite housing, so there's no way for me really to to get at the hub motor right now, not without like grinding it away with my Dremel or some other ungodly thing. But wait, what is this? Ah, a sticker, there we go. You're just a metal sticker in there, and you can see this will lift out. Yeah, I don't believe it will. You can see each of the armatures. This works much in the similar way that, like, a stepper motor. This is essentially a brushless motor, but uh, there's a magnet. The central hub is a magnet, essentially. And uh, these coils pulse in such a pattern that they can rotate this central hub, which is pretty cool. They require usually some sort of feedback so that it can tell the position of the rotor so that it knows which coils to turn on or off. But there are other methods of driving it without feedback. But uh, yeah, that is really cool there. And there's a little tiny flex cable in here which connects to all the coils. Trixie. I thought I had to remove the entire thing, but no, there's a little sticker over it. Metal sticker thing, whatever. Really ingenious, so the way that this all uh, came together. Anywho, that was my teardown.
of the Creative Zen Micro and a 6 gigabyte um, Seagate micro drive. And so, if you guys like this video, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Sorry that it took so long. This will be a pretty long video. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.